Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video. My yarn adventures for the week. So I have a crocheted finished object to show you. I have an acquisition, um, some yarn I've dyed, and let's talk about Tunisian crochet. So let's get started. Well, I had decided that I was going to reduce my whoops that I carried over in from 2021. And some of the ones left are quite large and the one I was determined to finish this week is now done. It is the Mixed Tape Cow by Zine and Rogers. It's quite big. Here it goes. Ta -da! It's quite a long, I guess you'd call it afghan. I didn't do it as wide as they did, but I did do it as long. And there you have it. I will put a photo of it at the end for you to check out. Um, but yes, I'm quite proud that I finished it. There are a couple of mistakes in there, a couple of boo-boos, but that's the way it goes. I did learn quite a bit doing this cowl. Um, I did it all in Spotlight's Cocoon um, yarn. I had Now they did nine colors, I think, but I only had six. And they were colours of my decor. Orange is my favourite colour. So I decided this would be for me to throw on the lounge as a little um, lounge lap gown for on those cooler tropical nights. But there you have it. I have finished it. Ta-da! And I really did enjoy it. I am going to look at some other Zine and Rogers patterns because I noticed they have quite a few. And they are paid for patterns, but this was free. And yes, I am so happy I finished it because it was, I could not start another whip till I finished this. So there you have it. I'll just put it down here. So that is my finished object for the week. And basically, pretty much all I've worked on. Now, my acquisitions. I do want to, I bought a lot of patterns last year and a lot of them I've gone I want to make that and I put it away so I have a I guess you call it a paid pattern library that I have I have decided I am going to do this year work my way some of through some of those paid patterns that I bought that I want to make and one of them I needed special size knitting needles and I wanted the higher knitting needles in this size to vary up my knitting needle um, stock and they're difficult to get because, of course, with mail service around the world, it's not easy. But I managed to track down the knitting needles I wanted from a small wool shop in New South Wales called Convent and Chapel. And they arrived this week. Um, I want to share this with you because I think it's really great. So what it is, is I bought knitting needles in two different sizes. And when I originally unpacked it, it was quite heavy, this package. The knitting needles were inside this booklet. Now, Convent and Chapel is in the region called Mudgy. And what they have done is, she said to protect the needles, they put them inside the booklet. But it is a tourism booklet on Mudgy. And I think that was a brilliant idea to encourage people from the north to have south and visit Mudgy. Because... Thing and I have been looking through it at different things and, and it's not an area we've ever considered visiting and I live in a tourism area that's really struggling since the pandemic hit and um, I'm going to go to our tourist bureau and see if they have any pamphlets on our region so that when I sell things and they're heading out to other states I'm going to put a pamphlet from our region in there and I highly suggest you should do it and encourage people to visit your town and region. So the knitting needles were inside that. And not only that, it gets better. They give you a postcard on the region to send to someone. I also, because I spent about $60. Now, this is a shop that probably deals in more um, high-end yarns rather than um, the cheaper versions. But they do have clearance and they did have something nice on special. So the one I picked was, it says four ply, it says sock yarn Monte Bianco, 75% wool, 
25% nylon. It's, I can't tell you the colour, it's just a colour number. But yeah, I thought this, just the colour got me because of the oranges and the blends. I don't know if I can see how much is in there. 400 metres, they say, in each ball, and I bought two. I'm really getting into this um, four-ply or fingering weight, I guess, I don't know, sports weight, whatever you call it, yarn. I'm starting to like these really finer yarns. So, yeah, to make the freight worthwhile for the knitting needles, I decided to buy those too. But it gets better. I like getting a little gift of anything, even a sticker when you buy something from a shop. But they put in there a tape measure, retractable little tape measure. And you can never have enough. I'm down to one. I probably had five and I've lost them along the way. So yeah, what a cute little gift. This is a great shop. So I put a link to their website in the description below. Um, for the Aussie girls, I'm not sure. I didn't check out if they do international, but feel free to check out Convent and Chapel wool shop in Mudgee, New South Wales. Just drop that down there. <laughs> Make myself some room. So last um, Sunday I said I was going to over dye some yarn for a project that I'm doing. Now I'm not a yarn dyer by any means. I just have a lot of fun doing it and I just use food colouring and I've done it before for fun and I was given a lot of um, light pink and light lavender wool that I have used some of but I decided I would over dye some for this project I'm doing. So I've done this before and this turned out almost identical to my first lot. I just put a heap of red and blue food colourings in the dye and I got these out of it. They're 25 and 50 gram balls and yes I am fortunate that Bing wound them up for me nice and soft. But that's the first colour I did. Then I experimented with the lighter pink and I used greens. Me, I used greens. And I got this gorgeous greeny colour, aqua greeny colour. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. And of course, I had to do orange. And this was the pale pink yarn over dyed with orange. And like the flecks of pink that come through just complement the orange. Now I'm not, most of the colour washed out and I'm not concerned that it will run when um, first washed. The project I'm doing I am planning on felting and if the colours run that's fine because it's multicoloured. But when I've done it, if I'm happy with it, I'll show you a before and after picture so you can see what I've been up to. But that was my little fun Sunday last week dyeing yarn. So I've been catching up on um, YouTube videos and watch time for some of the channels I really enjoy. I tend to try and stick to some of the smaller channels, try and check out their videos to encourage them to keep going and watch time for some of the bigger channels who really need it. And I've noticed a lot of them talking about um, Tunisian crochet project for the year with Jada in stitches. Now, a couple of years back, probably two years back, I went crazy and bought the Knit Pro Tunisian Crochet set. This one. Ta da A couple of times I've attempted to use it, because, but because traditionally I use a ply or three weight, I've never really been happy and never finished a project. But I was watching Abby from Blue Heart um, Crochet in the UK and she was doing the Tunisian crochet with Jada in stitches in hope to learn something and yes I have joined the cow because first of all it's in a four weight yarn and I've done January's and Tunisian crochet curls my January block it's squares 12 squares that we will join at the end is currently being blocked now I hardly block anything but you have to block Tunisian crochet, especially before you put the board around it. So this is February's, the full stitch. Look, I'm glad I'm doing this because I am learning a lot more than what I've when I've tried to do it on my own or other tutorials. 
Jada's, it's really great. Number of stitches. She's really clear on where to put your hook in. And yes, I am doing Jada in Stitches calendar or cowl for the year. I've never done one of hers before. The big help for me was before I got started, I looked on YouTube for a review of the Knit Pro set. And some are um, tips summer's tips and stitches that's terrible i can't remember it something like that i've watched some of it before on different things but it's been a while but her review and how she explained the set and all the things in it was brilliant because in here there was a lot of stuff i really didn't understand how to use it all and i was just sort of winging it but i am so glad i watched her review was only about five six seven minutes long i will put a link to it in there if you want to find out about the knit pro set this was a bargain i picked up because they're not cheap but i got it at a reasonable price so that was my yarn adventures for the week i've had um a bit more time on my hands to do things and yes i finished my uh, mixtape cow watching the olympics because i love the winter olympics now you're probably wondering why the Rams jersey is on my model. So here goes. For us, it's Super Bowl Monday. The Super Bowl gets televised and it's Monday here. So it's always referred to as Super Bowl Monday. I'm not really into it, but Reeves has been into it, as you can see, a long time. The St. Louis Rams, now the LA Rams, when I went to the US, to San Antonio on a work conference, he asked me to pick up a St. Louis Rams jersey. I think that might have been one of the first time they won the Super Bowl or were in the Super Bowl, can't remember. And in San Antonio, I was just amazed because it was must have been due for Super Bowl. Everywhere I went, parents had their kids dressed up. The little girls have been to the hairdressers, lots of ribbon. Just blew me away because I never really thought of it like they do here. And I could not get him a St. Louis Rams jersey. Every sports shop sold out, sold out. So part of my trip, I had to go to Vancouver, Canada, the next step. And I was wandering around Vancouver and I thought, oh, I'll check a sports shop, but they probably don't have it. And sure enough, he had this St. Louis Rams jersey, 28, 28 was fault. I think it's Marie's fault. Don't quote me on that. And yes, I brought that back as a gift for Reeves. And it was actually cheaper in Canada than I would have paid in San Antonio. So to say Reeves is excited that the LA Rams, no, formerly St. Louis Rams, are playing in the playoff of the Super Bowl is an understatement. Yes, there are a lot of people out there who do not want the LA Rams to win. But trust me, if you look at the sporting betting channels, everyone's betting on them. So whichever team you follow in the Super Bowl, I hope you enjoy it as much as Reeves will be on Super Bowl Monday. It's all he's talking about at the moment. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my yarn adventures this week. To those new subscribers, my yarn adventures could be anything to do with yarn. And yes, make some suggestions on what I can do for Tunisian crochet. Um, some easy projects other than squares, because I really do quite enjoy it. So until next time, stay safe, stay well, and remember, you could have a yarn adventure over dyeing yarn with me. Bye for now.